Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. Robert Maxim's Legacy Series has earned international acclaim as he highlights life's true virtues and purpose. A frequent guest at book fairs, conventions, and as a media resource, Robert was born in Cuba, moved to the U.S. at age 12, growing up in California. Now, as a child, he experienced sleep time visits to other worlds and alien craft encounters. Those visions continue in both wake and sleep states, shaping his life and changing his calling to science, religion, and the science of life. In 2014, Robert published the first in a series of five legacy episodes to rave reviews called The Must Read for Every Truth Seeker. Legacy is set in the future, describing one man's incredible journey through several lifetimes as far back as a million years. The blunders, the triumphs, the many worlds and places where those experiences took place. And that one man, Robert Maxim, back with us on This Week in America. Robert, welcome back to the program. We've got a bunch of questions. We're all set for today. Well, great. Let's get the show rolling. We And by the way, when we take the questions, if you go to our website or Robert's website, and I'll give you the uh, the information on those here in a couple of minutes, just send us a question. We'll be happy to get to them on the air at some point. If you live long enough, we'll maybe get to them. We have so many questions come in. We have to put these sort of in a priority and, and take them. And we'll start off right away with this one. What evidence is there that Atlantis really existed? Sounds like somewhat doubting it. And if so... Where was it? So we've got an Atlantis uh, question to uh, to start the day. Well, I have good news for the listener. Uh, this might actually sound shocking, but there's more evidence on Atlantis than there is on most historical and biblical patriarchs. Mm. Mm. Atlantis is not a myth or a story. Uh, conformance, conformists made it out to be that way, to avoid rewriting history. Uh, if you go to my website under the Evidence tab, Atlantis, you will find about 36 vetted historical references from all around the globe. And some of them show the actual location. Now, that's, no, that's here's interesting. Some, yeah, here's some, here's some facts. For example, uh, Statius said... Uh, and he lived around uh, the first century BC. Atlantis was 40 days sail from, but from, the Cape Verde Islands. The Cape Verde Islands are closer to the equator than the Canary Islands are, and just off the coast of West Africa. Now there are many other records that exist from people like Herodotus, Aristotle, Diodorus, Plato who actually say that Atlantis was in the Atlantic Ocean and also mentioned that it was a continent beyond it. In other words, hmm. America. Okay. Now, let's go all the way to India. Uh, the Hindu writings claim that Atlantis, or the White Island, was actually located at the same latitude as the Canary Islands. But we, can, we have all kinds of facts to find it. Um, now, we have to consider that the Earth's axis changes one degree every 553 years. So you have the precession. And the precession, and I don't know if the camera shows it, but yes. you show the precession of the axis goes like this. Okay. So the Earth's equator is constantly shifting, right? So let's go back 6,000 years. If you go back 6,000 years or 4,000 B.C., uh, the location of, of the Canary Islands uh, latitude would have shifted 11 degrees down towards the Lesser Antilles. Uh, right now, it points towards Andros Island in the Bahamas, but it would have been closer to what is now the, the island of Guadalupe. Now, keep that in mind. If we take 40 days sail from Cape Verde Islands, going west, uh, let's put it together. You have at about two and a half knots, 2,430 miles straight west from the Cape Verde Islands. Guess where you end up? Guadalupe Island, Lesser Antilles. Again, two references. Mm. So, 43 days from the Canary Islands, 40 days from Cape Verde. Uh, definitely Atlantis was not in Santorini, it was not in Ukraine, it was not in Spain, it was not in Morocco, it was not in Asia, Egypt, Libya, or even Peru, 
or a lot of people think it was in Antarctica. Mm -mm. If you go by the historical records, they coincide on one spot. It's the island of Guadalupe, in the Lesser Antilles. You know, that's what I like about it, what, what gives you so much credibility. When you're asked a question, you don't just say, yes, it existed, because you've actually researched this. Obviously, questioned in your own mind, as you were putting all of these principles together and, and, and wanted to make sure that, okay, I, I want to make sure in my mind that Atlantis actually existed. You not only proved that it existed, you know exactly where it is. So you've done the research on this. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, information that has been dug up from the ocean floor around Cuba, around um, the Bahamas. A lot of interesting stuff has been found and continues to be found. So the search is not over yet. And there's no reason to say that some of these, uh, shall we say, ancient artifacts are not necessarily under the ocean. They could also be buried. Uh, consider Haiti, Puerto Rico, and all those li islands were at one time part of that large continent before it broke up. Robert Maxim, our guest on This Week in America, his website that he talked about, you can go to rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com. Another website with great information is unariansunited.com. Of course, you can link on to Robert's website directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. He mentioned the evidence tab on his website. A lot of great information there. And if you would like to, uh, to get in touch with Robert or myself, you can do so at either of our websites, and we'll be happy to try to get the, the questions answered on the next program. That takes care of Atlantis. Another question what are some of the greatest achievements of Lemuria? So we have both of those back-to-back -back we're going to talk about today. What are some of the, uh, the, the great achievements that you feel? Mm. Uh, Lemuria is kind of the unspoken giant in history. Not much is known about it. And I've touched base on evidence uh, that Lemuria did exist, even from a biological uh, and DNA perspective. So that's in previous uh, radio interviews. And it's also on the website. But uh, to be brief, uh, Lemuria grew from a wild forest environment into what can be called a jewel of spirituality. But, you know, any time that you progress positively, the negative follows. Whatever goes up must come down. And it's, that's what we call a cycle or a karmic lesson. Actually came in from ancient galactic struggle days and it stressed the hearts of many to seek power. And all the technology and all the spirituality that was achieved was turned to human mental controls and space war. Uh, man repeated all space war days. And Legacy Episode 3 and 4 are actually going to go into, into those details. Uh, and it will be available soon. Well, that's uh, interesting. That's mm -hmm. that. That really is the next question. And I guess we talk mm -hmm. so much and we get involved in in answering questions and our discussion here. We sometimes forget the basis of this is legacy, legacy series. The question is: I see legacy episodes one and two on Amazon. Are there other episodes available anywhere? So let's talk about the series. We've got one and two on Amazon, and you're ready with uh, with more series. You just said, yeah. Uh, three is coming out in a couple of months. Three is uh, the history of the beginnings of, of Lemuria, how it was founded, what kind of people were on this planet at the time, where did other settlers come from, and what time frames, what happened, uh, how did the continent begin to develop, uh, who interfered, was it good for good, for bad. Uh, that's, that's what episode three is about. Episode four is into more modern Lemurian times, getting to uh, space wars, destroying uh, destroying planets, destroying Mars, for example. Uh, and of course, what roles I played in all of that, which I, unfortunately, I played some very negative roles. Uh, and eventually, the destruction of Lemuria, when it happened, how it happened, uh, who were the players involved so that will be four five is uh episode five is a surprise and mm. uh i'll just leave it at that but you got to read three and four before you get to five. before you get to five and once again these are almost like what historical books this is not yes. science fiction made up stuff 
of things that never happened. These are experiences that, uh, that you actually saw you lived through, didn't you? I did, and, and not only myself, but others. Uh, and I know that this question has been asked many times on the show, uh, you know, where's, where's the proof, where's the beef? And uh, being very devious, uh, uh, dubious, not devious, maybe dubious, <laughs> <but> dubious. <laughs> Uh, I always have to check things out, and I have found sufficient evidence from other viewers and other other, mater- other historical uh, material that actually confirms it. So I'm not alone at this. Do you find that sometimes you get people who, who will hear you, whether it's on this program or at one of the conventions that, you, that you're appearing at, they suddenly have the freedom to discuss openly what they weren't sure what they were dealing with, with, with past lives and different feelings and possibly mm-hmm. visits and that. You sort of give them the, uh, the, the availability, the openness to come in and discuss it. Do you find people are somewhat relieved sometimes that, oh, I thought maybe I was losing my mind, but I know exactly what you're talking about? Well, uh, they don't want to leave. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As a matter of fact, um, all through the day, I have people who... Uh, uh, for years, they, they call me every day. They want to keep talking about it. Uh, they want to learn more about it. And together in that sharing, we actually do a lot of um, uh, reawakening of past life events. We're able to figure out a lot of uh, and confirm a lot of past life okay. uh, uh, situations that we had together. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program, we've mentioned several times the video version of this. If you were listening to the radio version, if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, or go to uh, Robert's website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com, you go to the uh, YouTube channel where we have all of these visits there, and it's great because you can see Robert. You, he's got to usually some some pictures that we can talk about. He'll do something visual during the course of the program, so you can see the, the video portion there. Next question, we've sort of touched on this. What happens in past life therapy? I'm concerned about someone playing with my mind. So here's someone that sounds like they're open to it. Mm -hmm. They're just concerned about who's doing it and if there will be any, I don't know, like planting uh, negative suggestions or something, some some long-term negative impact. So what happens in therapy and is someone, in fact, playing with your mind? Oh, my goodness. This has to be probably one of the most important questions uh, that I've heard in, uh, you know, in years. And yes, the l- listener should be very concerned. Students, students sharing experiences and lessons without ego involved, meaning to learn of their past lives. Uh, like I was just mentioning that individuals will call and will get into sharing experiences, you know, doing it in a positive way, uh, getting help for example, from confirmed higher non-earthly sources uh, like, you know, our higher spiritual brothers, that's, that's fine. But past life therapy, past life therapy can fall victim to intercessors, uh, concepts, for example, of uh, involving hypocrisy, incompetence. You know, sometimes people feel like a helpless virus, a contagion, you know, so negative. Why am I even alive? That's not the mark of an able student in flight. Jesus called public witnessing and prayer hypocritical in Matthew 6. And God's law promotes self-enablement, not dependency, self-enablement. Now, ask yourself, what's wrong with having past lives? And what's wrong with being you? Why should anyone need earthly help or therapy to write you off as a basket case? Uh, what has to be cured? And who judges? What uh, judges what you have to change or why you're negative? Right. Apparently, someone with a superiority complex that is too holy for the rest of us is what's driving this. The higher self. Your inner higher self, your still small voice, is your sole therapist. Anyone selling service is an intercessor, and it's refuted by infinite law. Past lives are evolutionary lessons, not a disease. So no one is really authorized to provide therapy or do your homework for you. That's a disablement. 
never put anyone over you as a teacher, advisor, or helper. That's a violation against universal rights. No one, and let me repeat, no one has the right to teach, point out problems, to improve, cure, give past readings, even do lifetime reenactments, or much more, tell you that you're negative and you need help. No, 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 no. Uh, if you're ill and you need to see a doctor, you know, that's fine. But all you need is to understand the science of life on your own terms, be willing to solve your own problems, and let your higher self, who knows you the best, tell you the what and the when of your own lower self, clueless of what you need and with clueless helpers, all you're doing is inflating your ego. How do we tap into our best self? Uh, well, the first thing you have to do is you have to tell uh, the difference between your emotions and your positive inspiration. Uh, what I've done over time is do something that Dr. Norman suggested uh, from way back uh, in the beginning. Dr. Norman was the founder of the Unarius Teachings. And he said, during the night, take a notepad, divide a sheet of paper in half, on the left side of the sheet of paper, put right on, write in all of the good things you remember that happened to you during the day. On the right side, put in all the bad things you feel that happened. And what you're supposed to do is analyze both and try to find the source. Okay, so I was angry at this person who said this. Why? Oh, because of that. Okay, why was that? Oh, because of that. Well, why was that? You know, just drive in, drive in until you realize what part of you is actually bringing that negative event about. And sometimes you have to go in 20 or more layers in to, to dig this up. And when you find out what the real reason was and what the fear was, you're surprised that how can something so deeply nested in me had this effect? Well, that's how you find out your lower self from your higher self. Very it, simple, it sounds like. And very you, simple. And you did it yourself. You didn't need a facilitator. And I'm going to tie this in with a question that's on down the list a little bit, but it's exactly what we're talking about. Someone writes in and says, I saw a TV commercial for a past life facilitator. Are these people legit? What should I ask them? Uh yeah, we just talked about this. So you well, yeah, that's what I wanted to tie that in. It's almost, like a, it's almost like a parlor game these people are playing with this. <laughs> yeah, your inner facilitator is free. No one knows you better <laughs> than your higher self. Uh, it also knows when you should know stuff. Uh, uh, your emotions are your past. So hear them out. They will tell you precisely why you feel the way you do. These silent words are your past lives talking. So when your past talks, please listen, take note, and learn to, whatever you feel, don't be afraid of it. Uh, turn the other cheek, forgive yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Forgive yourself, it was a lesson, whatever it was. Uh, be dead honest, hear them out, share it forgive, turn the other cheek, and do something positive. A lot of great information there. If you're just joining us, Robert Maxim, our guest in the program, that's M-A-X-X-I-M. -X -X His website is rgaten, R-G-A-E-T-A-N.com. Information as well at unariansunited.com. We're talking about the Legacy Series, uh, episodes one and two available. You can get information at Robert's website. Of course, you can get information available uh, as well at, uh, at Amazon. We're taking all of your questions on the program today, and we've got many, and I'm sure at the end of the program we will have many more. If you have a question, you can go to uh, comments and, and contact on both of our websites and get that information to us. Next question uh, says, what is a false religion? They've heard us discuss, they've heard you discuss false religion many times. How would you define a false religion? Uh, I would say anything that adulterates or does not follow God's original works. Anything that promotes intervention, 
Well, we just talked about uh, therapy as yes. an intervention. Uh, pleading or doing favors to gain divine services, self-beating, perfect example. Uh, uh, you know, truth for money concepts. I'll tell you the truth, but you give me money. Uh, conversion. Um, anything that suppresses knowing and loving yourself, like we just discussed. Um, and of course, anything that prohibits you from extending the courtesy of love and knowledge to others and to God. Accusations, condemnations, uh, interfering with people's lives, uh, making you feel unworthy, incompetent, uh, that there's only one life. Uh, my favorite is always evangelizing others to save your soul instead of acting godly. To me, that's a dependency chain worse than drug addiction and uh, the worst crime against humanity because it murders the soul not the body we have no business convincing people people must be best convinced by reasons they themselves discover uh, this is what people believe and do in the name of god unfortunately they have been misled true religion is basically this simply letting others be. Leave them alone. Instead, deal with your own problems in private. If you look at G what Jesus said in Matthew 6, that's precisely what we should be doing. Go into the closet. Close the door. Don't be a hypocrite going out trying to prove that you know everything and converting people and saying, uh, you know, I'm praying to God. Watch me pray. That's not what he wanted to say. Go into the closet in private contact father is that what we do i don't think so no no another question chase right in with that is mm -hmm. christianity false Ooh. yeah uh, that got your attention didn't it can I, <laughs> where's, where's my lawyer can I <laughs> three little words is christianity oh, false uh, <laughs> okay um well that's a good one uh, there's a lesson to be learned in any <laughs> belief system. But, you know, being Christ-like is actually a universal goal. Uh, however, trying to state it as politely as I possibly can so no one is offended or swayed in any way, beware. Most beliefs are severe miscarriages of God's word set up to make money, not to teach God's true law. We must all be Christ-like, absolutely. We must be Christ-like. Yes, the entire universe applauds that. That's what the entire universal brotherhood is aiming for, to be Christ-like. But watch out for wolves in sheep's clothes claiming to be Christian or represent Christ's values because they're anything but. They call every, every, everyone else false prophet. Uh, what, a couple of days ago, I had somebody call me Satan. Uh, yet they yes. are the genuine article. You know, deep dive, please. Deep dive and practice being Christ-like. Not from somebody's lips, but from Jesus' own words. Read them carefully and apply them. Don't take your words from someone else. So that way you can question disseminators or false religion objectify and see what all of this pulpit charisma and fear tactics don't really want you to see because it means money so be very careful true love is free you've true mentioned love, yes just because you've mentioned money several times and i keep thinking i was flipping through the television channels a while back and they uh a preacher was on and talking about tithing and fr first fruits and other ways that you are supposed to, like the first thing you do is, is you, you send money. Is that a, a beware to you, or is that something that has uh, some biblical foundation to it? It has biblical foundation. Uh, back in the days, uh, tithing was set up, which is 10% of, of goods, and not necessarily money, but goods. It could be a tenth of your flock. It could be a tenth of, of the gold that you 
that you developed, uh, if you obtained clothing, and maybe a tenth of the clothing went to the priesthood. So, yes, that was biblical. It's actually good to be able to uh, to provide the source of spirituality with, uh, with funds so that they can help carry on uh, spiritual leadership and, and proper representation. But when it comes to the cost of what you're being taught, being, shall we say, compromised, don't just don't just give yourself into something without first checking it out. We were talking about being Christ-like, and Christ said one thing. If you remember, there was this rich man that came over to the coffers, and he pounded his chest and threw this big pot of money into the chest and said, here's my tithe. And here came uh, a poor woman, a poor widow, and she only had a penny. And she gave that penny. And what did Jesus say? She just gave everything she had. So it's what's in the heart, people. It's you have to see true love, not because you have the power to give, but because you have the power uh, to love. And it's not about the amount. It's about what you have in here. Very That's interesting. Christ-like. Robert Maxim with us on This Week in America, the website rgaten.com, uh, G-A-E-T-A-N. Uh, Dot com. Let me do that again. R G A E G A E T A N dot com and UnarianUnited dot com. A question regarding this uh, sort of tied in in terms of Christianity: Are there Christian denominations that believe in reincarnation? Something we've talked about uh, extensively oh, yes. in the program. Oh yes, hundreds, hundreds do. A matter of fact, the Unity Church, the Cathars, the Bogom Mills. Um, uh, Rosicrucians, actually, uh, they come to mind right away. Uh, but here's something interesting. I don't think I've mentioned this in the show before, so this is interesting. When Jesus and the disciples used the word regeneration in the Bible, they were using a very special Greek word. And this is documented in your Bibles, but most people, most people haven't seen it. The word used for regeneration was the, the Greek word palingenesis. Palingenesis is a word that Greeks reserved to mean reincarnation for hundreds of years. So the word palingenesis is reincarnation. So now I ask, is the word reincarnation in the Bible? Literally, literally it is. Twice. Uh, let me take you over to Matthew 19. Uh, verse 28, and in there Jesus says, Ye that followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits in the throne of, of his glory, judge the twelve tribes. Now, let's reread this. First, the word palingenesis for regeneration, and the word krino for judge. What Jesus said is as follows. Ye that follows me in the reincarnation, when the Son of Man sits in the throne of glory, be separate from the twelve tribes. So what is Jesus saying? When you come back, don't mix yourself with the twelve tribes, or you won't. Here's another, here's another reference, and this is from Titus. Titus. Uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 5, which says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So what does that mean? Let's reread it again. It says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. How? by the washing of reincarnation and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So what's the Holy Ghost? This explains it. 
the Holy Ghost is your higher self. And the renewing that happens, the washing, is in between lives. So there you have two references. And there are a ton of other regeneration derivative words in the Bible. Now, um, I trust them, but I don't focus on them because they are not exactly the word palingenesis. Uh, they may have relationships with reincarnation, but they're not as um, definite right. as palingenesis. And, you know, I always go for evidence, so I just stick <laughs> to, to the pure evidence there. Well, and there's enough evidence there. So the answer to that question would be uh, yes, and uh, an excellent answer. It's uh, always interesting to get the uh, your answers, and boy, that's direct. It's not It's not implied. It's actually there if, if you read it correctly. Another uh, listener question. I watched a TV show on Scientology. How accurate is their auditing to free people of their past life traumas? Oh, man. Um, there are so many systems that, that uh, you know, I'm not going to pick on Scientology, but I'm going to speak in general. Uh, there are so many groups, there are so many people that do this, even in the slightest way. And we go back to this past life therapy thing. Uh, intercessors have no place, no place in universal law or progressive evolution. It's a disablement. Let's keep that word in mind, disablement. Dependency on others is like asking, uh, let's say that you ask for a tow truck when your car is full of, has a tank full of gas. So why do you need a tow? Right. You really don't need a tow. You can just turn on the engine and go. Objectivity is all that you need. So don't surrender it to no one. Put it to practice. Get used to it. You know yourself better than anyone else does. So whomever does it for you, um, I'm going to say that they're a spiritual vampire. That's strong. Yes. That uh, Interesting, I did not look at Scientology that way. You were basically saying that's one of the facilitators in this case that we were talking about before, and, uh, and you don't need that. That's right, and there's other groups. Uh, I know that there's uh, a cult down in San Diego, uh, and uh, this is what they supposedly excel in, uh, past life therapy. Um, all I can say is, uh, without mentioning names, it's bunk. There's, there's no way that anybody has the right to tell you when you need to learn something or to help you without having the right foundation to things. You, know, you and I have spoken many times about this, and uh, you know the, the, the care that I practice whenever I mention anything out of the past, because uh, the person has to be ready. They, it has to be their time. And um, I'll quote Benjamin Franklin again. Men are best convinced by reasons they themselves discover. So the best thing that any facilitator can do is say, you can do it. You can do it. You don't need help. You can do it. Get up, pick up your bed, and walk. And that's what Jesus meant by that. Yes, you can do it. Robert Maxim, our guest on This Week in America. We are taking uh, listener questions. If you have questions, go to our website or Robert's website and uh, submit them. Very simple, in the contact or comments page, and we'll, uh, we'll get to them on the program. A uh, new question. Uh, this is heavy stuff as well. I, most of this is today here. Are the end days of Earth near? We oh, hear all about that, and there are people that say, yep, right around the corner. What, what do you think? Are the end days near? Will, will there ever be an end day? Oh, gosh. No. Um, there will be natural disasters, and the face of the planet will change from what it is today. But still, we're moving today into a more positive future that will last thousands of years. The story of Armageddon, people, is the story of our hearts. 
uh, we are now in the third world, the time of the dead, and I know it well. Apocalypse chapter 11. Uh, I have heard prophecies being interpreted so many so many ways, the two and a half days, the two and a half years, the 1260 days. Uh, I've heard it for years. I've studied it myself. All I can say is that the time of the dead is is the time of us to awake. Yes, we are dead. And if you begin to realize just how little we know about what happens inside of this pressure cooker, and you realize, I'm really dead. I, I know more about uh, maybe math than I do my own soul, my own emotions. I, I don't know why I go. I don't know why I come. Uh, you know, uh, I have no recollection uh, of uh, uh, of coming with a manual to this life, so I feel like I, I can do whatever I want. It, no, no information on the universal laws, and what we hear from our devotional leaders is not being Christ-like. So, the the good thing is this: we can see that uh, we can see a plethora of child prodigies that are being born today. These are advanced beings that are going to help carry this world forward and make it uninhabitable to more negatively minded souls. Uh, these will have to make home elsewhere in the universe, but not here. So yeah, we hear a lot of chaos. We hear, uh, we had this unfortunate school incident just recently. You know, it saddens my heart, uh, but these are the last throngs, in my opinion, of all of these negative souls. Uh, there, it's their last ditch effort to cause chaos and take, try to take and scare people uh, as much as they can, so that they side with them. Stay away from fear and concern. Be positive. Don't be concerned about death. Don't be concerned about threat. That's what ties you to these negative forces. Instead, let them be. Uh, death is, death doesn't exist. Life doesn't exist. Fear and threat keeps you from listening to your higher self. So put that out of your mind. If it, if it comes to me, if it comes to you, if it must be done, let it be. But at least you will be freed from their grasp. And that's what they want. That's why we see the world the way it is. Let the world be the world. It is changing. So change for the positive and don't try to save it because it will save itself. Past shows with Robert, and there are a number, dozens of shows that we've done in the past available at our website, thisweekinamerica.us, in the uh, the iTunes uh, channel, uh, Apple Play, Google Play, all of that, and of course the video versions on YouTube as well. Question, do we have to explore our past lives to live our current life to its fullest? Oh, we must objectify and know our feelings at all times. These are born from past lives, so yes. And as you do that, past lives will come to you. That's living life to its fullest. Attractions and pleasures are not. So to live life to the fullest, know yourself, know the universal law, know why you're here. That's the fun part of life. A question that ties in with that, and we have several that are pretty much following that, that same theme. What are the signs of past lives? Someone who is just somewhat interested in, in what you've been talking about, and they go, I, I, how would I know I've had a past life? What are some of the signs? What, what should we be watching for? Uh, energy cannot be destroyed. So anything that you are, desire, know, and fear, that's your past. All of you comes from the past. Every thought, interest, love, and what you detest, Accidents, disease, jobs, even friends. Uh, and it's not just your past from an hour ago or a year ago or 10 years ago. It could be from 100,000 years ago. Uh, your past is with you and it will relive itself in everything that you do. Uh, even everything you imagine that might happen. That is your past. So that's the sign. To know these signs, you have to be aware that this is exactly what you are. 
And once you do, then the signs, you no longer need signs. What you need is to understand what these feelings are. And a question that follows along with that is, what does my past life say about who I am now? And I think you just, uh, you mm -hmm. touched on that. We, we sort of are what we were. Exactly. And as they say, you spent thousands of years making yourself up. So don't tell me you're disappointed with the results. <laughs> well, yeah, it, because <laughs> the only person you can blame is you. Exactly. You made it what you are. Got that. Robert Maxim, <laughs> our guest on the program, as we rapidly are running out of time, but covered a lot of great ground here. One that ties in, and I'll do this as well. Do you live on Earth in your past lives? Are, are, again, are you reflective of what's happened in the past? Maybe not aware of it, but what you do, your actions, who you are, is who you were. Uh, once again, I keep coming back to that, but that, am I correct? Is that pretty well summing up? Well, you know, up until about a week ago, I, I could see that I had lived on this planet for the last 127,000 years. But, you know, to my detriment, I saw something that dated back to 500,000 years. So I had to rewrite my history on that. <laughs> and I still have more lives to go. Uh, I have a lot more to fix down here. And I'm going to have to uh, go back to school. Now, it's interesting as, as we close out a couple minutes left in the program. I get the impression from listening to you over all of these programs and what you just said, you're still a student. You would think that you've got all the answers now and you know perfectly how this all fits together. You're still discovering things, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Was a look at this. And it actually, uh, that lifetime resolves so many issues for me. Uh, what happened in that lifetime, I know we have no time to go into it. It answered a lot of uh, inner emotions that I had. And once I felt how I felt in that life, then I said, ah, oh, so that's why I am angry at this. This is why I'm afraid of this. This is why I like this. Bam, bam, bam. Everything just linked together. Now, that came as a dream. It's a very intense dream. I am, I am, since I'm still working on episode three, I am going to put it into episode three. Mm, interesting. So when you, when you read episode three and you see that thing there about something that happened 500,000 years ago, uh, you'll go back to this radio show and remember, ah, he said this is very important and this rewrote his time clock. Well, we'll be looking for that in the Legacy Series. That's what we're talking about by Robert Maxim, M-A-X-X-I-M. Uh, Legacy Series 1, 2, available Buy him at, at information at Robert's website, also, of course, at, uh, at Amazon. His websites are very simple, rgaten, R-G-A-E-T-A-N.com, and more information available at unariansunited.com. Of course, by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to Robert's website. At either website, you can uh, leave your comments and questions, and we'll be happy to tackle those on the next program. Robert, as always, a fascinating time that we just spent together here. It goes away too quickly. We'll be back. We've got plenty more questions that are already in. I'm sure plenty more that will be generated from the program today. Thank you uh, for sharing some time and some thoughts with us. Important program today. My pleasure. Keep the questions coming. And you can do that by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, or Robert's website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. And again, information available at unariansunited.com. You're listening to This Week in America, and we're back on today's program right after these messages. <laughs> 